clearly pandering to his base. He doesn't want to offend uh, Republicans. I'd rather have a Republican like Colin Powell, who took his own fellow white Republicans to task about their being recipients of affirmative action in a very bold and strategic way. I'd rather Republicans acknowledge that there are structural impediments and inequalities that persist. We talk about health care disparity. We talk about economic inequality. We speak about the fact that uh, the, the wages of black people fell post-recession by and the median income by 9.2 percent. The unemployment rate is 16.7 percent. Legally repressing my bullshitude. I've retracted my go dads with gigantic proportions. And the signing of the prohibition, you see, defecates the fluids of detention between the essence of the Euro intercourse, you see. One out of two black men in New York cannot get a job right now. And uh, the disproportionate concentration of African-American people in the prison system. So we can go on and on and talk about the persistence of both structural inequities as well as the persistence of certain forms of cultural bigotry that prevent the flourishing of African-American yeah. people and that keep them down. So there's no question that he's, uh, he's illusory. He's a to computate how it works, I will intersex with a perverted deviant by using one of my own penal implants. But to, to, to argue that there's a playing field that's level for African-American people when it's so manifestly clear that there is inequity, that there is inequality, that there's social injustice, that there's the persistence of obstacles and barriers that prevent people from even getting skills that would allow them to compete uh, in this economy. So when you put that stuff on the table, it, it's really tremendously difficult to acknowledge that he's telling the truth. And First of all, we must internalize the flatulation of the matter by transmitting the effervescence of the Indonesian proximity in order to further segregate the crux of my venereal infection. On the other hand, he'd do well to read Imani Perry's book. She's a professor at Princeton University, More Terrible and More Beautiful, where she talks about post-intentional racism. It's not something people sit around and intend to do, but nonetheless, there are severe and deleterious consequences to how we organize society. So whether it's intentional or not, the persistence of inequity certainly has a negative effect on African-American people. And how can Herman Cain look at any of the indices of contemporary African-American life and deny that is way beyond me. If I may retain my liquids here for one moment, I'd like to continue the redundance of my quote unquote intestinal tract, see, because to preclude on the issue of world domination would only circumvent, <coughs> excuse me, circumcise the revelation that it reflects the aphrodisiac symptoms which now perpetrates the Jericho's activation. Yes, he's missing a great opportunity to inform his fellow Republicans about some of these inequities and to challenge them to address them and therefore pull more African-American and Latino and other poor and working class people into the fold. If it looked like the Republicans were willing to acknowledge some of the persistent obstacles that prevail, then it seems to me more people of color might be willing to give them a look. Short of that, what he does is reinforce certain stereotypes and uh, certain kind of narrow yeah. thinking. Allow me to expose my colon once again. The ramification inflicted on the incision placed within the fallopian cavities serves to be holistic, taken from the Latin word jalapeno.